portable power is something most of us need at times. Whether it's for charging our phones, laptops, cameras and drones, or for powering lights, fans or portable fridges. A company leading the way in portable power stations for all use cases is Blue Eddy. They make portable power stations capable of powering your handheld devices, all the way up to power stations that can power your whole home for days on end. Recently, Blue Eddy reached out to me about reviewing their new portable power station, the Blue Eddy EB3A. The EB3A is their entry level power station. It's the most portable power station they offer at only 4.7 kilos, yet it's powerful enough for a multitude of uses. In this video, we'll be taking a look at what's in the box and learn about the device itself. And then once I've had a chance to test it out, I'll share my thoughts in another video. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that upload. Full disclosure, Blue Eddy did supply me with this EB3A for review purposes, but this video is not a paid promotion. With that said, let's get into the unboxing. Inside the box, you'll find the main unit itself, along with a couple of cables, a user manual and a warranty form. The user manual seems to cover everything I have needed to know about the device, and the warranty form is there just in case you need it. Here in Australia, Blue Eddy is giving you a two year warranty on the power station. The cables included are for charging the EB3A. The first is a standard AC power cable, and the second is a cable you can use to charge the power station from solar panels. Blue Eddy sell the EB3A in a package with either 120 watt or 200 watt solar panels, and I'll touch more on that later. The battery inside the EB3A is a lithium ion phosphate battery. Lithium ion phosphate batteries offer a considerably longer lifespan than other battery types, and Blue Eddy says that after 2,500 charges, you will still retain 80% of the original capacity. 2,500 charges is the equivalent of draining the EB3A every day for almost seven years. Lithium ion phosphate batteries also experience a slower rate of capacity loss, leading to a longer shelf life if not being used regularly. Onto the device itself, it feels really well built. It has a handle on top that sits flush when not being used, and on the top there's also the 15 watt wireless charging pad. On the front, you'll see a whole lot of ports, one side has the fan intake, the other has the fan exhaust, and the bottom has four rubber feet, a compliance sticker, and the tech specs. The front is split into five sections. You have the DC outputs, the AC outputs, the charging inputs, a light, and the display. Starting with the display, I find it quite intuitive to read. On the left, you have the input or charging watts. On the right, the output watts, and the center shows the remaining battery life in a graph along with percentage and also hours remaining based on your current use. At the moment, you can see the power station is being charged via the AC cable, and you can see the input is 264 watts. Because I am charging, the time display tells you how long to go to 100% charge. And now if I plug some devices in, you can see the output watts start to increase based on the load. If I disconnect the AC charger, you can see the graph go the other way to indicate the battery is being used, and the remaining time shown will update based on the watts being consumed by whatever is plugged in. Onto the charging section of the EB3A, and you can see there are two inputs along with an overload circuit protector. Under the flap is the standard AC input port. Using this port, Blue Eddy says you can charge the power station in one and a half to two hours in standard mode, or just one hour in turbo mode. And to the left of the AC input port is the DC input. This will take 12 to 28 volts and a maximum of 8.5 amps. This is designed to allow you to plug in your solar panels or to charge from the 12 volt outlet in your car using an additional cable. You can see here I have a solar blanket plugged in and it's a very overcast day so I'm not getting a great deal of solar power. At this rate, it'll take quite a while to charge. You can input a maximum of 200 watts of solar and Blue Eddy says charge time should be around two hours. Using the 12 volt outlet in your car, it'll be more like three and a half hours to charge. Using both AC and DC charging, you can input a maximum of 430 watts for around a one to one and a half hour charge. So we know how to charge it up, let's look at how to use the power station's stored energy. On the DC output panel, there are six separate outputs along with a 15 watt wireless charger on top. First up, there is a standard 12 volt accessory outlet. This is essentially the same as what most cars have and can be great for powering all those camping accessories like air bed inflators, air compressors, and camping lights. Below that, there are two 12 volt 10 amp DC 5521 barrel outlets, two 5 volt 3 amp USB-A outlets, and one 100 watt USB-C port. This will pretty much cover most DC power uses, and if you have specific cases, 
you'll be able to find an adapter to suit. To use any of these outputs, along with the wireless charger, you need to press the on button for that panel and then DC will show on the display to indicate it's on and available to supply power. On the AC side of things, there is one outlet capable of supplying up to 240 volts at 600 watts. This is enough for things like a small blender, mini rice cooker or small fridge. It's not going to power things like a toaster, hairdryer or clothes iron, but Bluetti does have other power stations that will do just that if you need. Same as the DC panel, you need to turn the AC outlet on when you want to use it. If you have the EB3A plugged into AC power and also using the AC output, the power station goes into UPS mode. So if your home power cuts out at any stage, the EB3A takes over supplying power to your devices. Handy for things like your modem or PC where loss of power might mean a loss of work. The final panel is the light. This offers two intensities and also flashes Morse code SOS. You cycle through the options with the button next to it. As with most devices these days, there is an app to control the EB3A2. Using Bluetooth, you can see the power input and output, the battery percentage, and also toggle on and off the DC and AC outputs as you need. You can also update the firmware and request service of your power station through the app too. Just to show you quickly one use for this power station, all the footage of me talking to the camera in this video has been powered by the EB3A. I'm using it to run my main light, my backlight, even power for my camera and iPad for my script. It's pretty impressive. So that's the first look at the Bluetti EB3A power station. It feels like a premium device with a multitude of ports to cover many applications. If you want to grab a Bluetti EB3A, there's a link in the description. And in a couple of weeks, I'll upload a full review with my thoughts. So make sure you subscribe so you don't miss that. Thanks for watching.